Now, President Biden is getting to bed extra early tonight, I'm told, because after all, last night's Kennedy Center honors had him out way past his bedtime. Oh, hobnobbing with Bette Midler and Lorne Michaels is thoroughly exhausting anyway. So, well, tomorrow he's going to dial in to what's being dubbed a virtual summit with Vladimir Putin. At the top of the discussion list is Ukraine, where Russian troops have amassed at the border. These latest satellite images from Russia suggest Moscow is now engaged in an unprecedented buildup near the Ukrainian frontier, enough to mount an overwhelming invasion. U.S. intelligence says Russia is preparing to invade Ukraine with nearly 175,000 troops. Tens of thousands of Russian troops have deployed on its border with Ukraine, revealed in these satellite images. Well, the sad fact is Biden is so weak that Putin feels perfectly confident to start issuing demands even before the talks begin. President Vladimir Putin is expected to issue President Biden an ultimatum during their video meeting Tuesday, guarantee that NATO will never expand into Ukraine or Russia might soon launch an offensive against its neighbor. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian defense minister is on CNN giving Biden advice. I would like to ask him to very uh, understandable, articulate to Mr. Putin that no red lines from Kremlin side could be here. Red line is here in Ukraine. We need modernization of weaponry. We have, we need um, electronic warfare and etc. The et cetera is what costs a lot of money. Now, although he claimed Ukraine won't need U.S. or NATO boots on the ground, we know how risky this situation is, especially with incompetence like General Mark Milley and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin in charge. Now, they couldn't beat the Taliban. We were humiliated in Afghanistan, but they're going to scare off Putin? And by the way, all this is unfolding as Americans' trust in the military is declining. Now, one recent poll found that just 40 percent of Americans place a great deal of trust in the U.S. military. That's down 70 per, from 70 percent in November 2018 and dropping 11 percent since February. Now, for some reason, the Biden team thinks Putin will be intimidated by State Department spokesperson Ned Price. If Russia chooses to fail to de-escalate, if Russia chooses to move forward uh, with any plans uh, it may have developed uh, to uh, continue its military aggression or to aggress militarily uh, upon Ukraine, to violate Ukraine's uh, sovereignty, its independence, its territorial integrity, uh, we and our allies would be prepared to act. Now, is it just me or does he seem to be like a little boy who just rummaged through his dad's closet and is walking around the house wearing his suit as a gag. Now, notice, by the way, the much more passive tone these clowns use when they're talking about China. We're clear-eyed about the challenge uh, that China presents. But China's not 10 feet tall. Do you think it's time to speak more boldly or clearly when referring to China, the Communist Party, and its communist ambitions? Well, I, you know, I think we're, we're doing a lot of that. You know, we'll continue to speak uh, very clearly about our concerns. But again, we're in a competition with China, uh, and, but, and we don't have to be uh, in a conflict. But conflict is precisely what plenty in the military-industrial complex are itching for in the Russia-Ukraine situation. Now, publicly, Austin kept the conversation very general. We're going to remain engaged with our, our, our allies in the region and our partners in the region. And, uh, and we're going to continue to do everything we can to help uh, provide uh, Ukraine the capability to protect the sovereign territory. Now, translation, Americans will foot the bill again. The Ukrainians know this, and they're gleefully fanning the flames. Do you believe Russia will invade? I will not believe that Russia will uh, have a victory. Russian guys also will come back in the cor um, coffin. coffins. Now, this type of rhetoric is really foolish. If our so-called European allies are so worried about Russia, why are they buying so much natural gas from them? And why do NATO countries invest so little in their own militaries? The EU's economy is multiples bigger than Russia's. Germany's alone is more than twice as big. So why isn't Germany, Germany funneling troops eastward? The answer is 
they don't really care about Ukraine. Because if Russia is such a menace, why did Biden approve Nord Stream 2? Why did Biden whip our own oil and gas industry and drive up the cost of fuel and make Putin even richer? If he were really worried about Russia, he'd want to keep our energy prices low here at home. The truth is Biden gave Putin a huge amount of leverage, and he's about to use it to embarrass Biden on the world stage, which we told you would happen. Declaring war on America's energy independence will only make us weaker across the board. So right now, Republicans on the Hill should be laying down a marker on this Russia-Ukraine issue. The GOP position should be that we will not support any significant military action against Russia unless, number one, Congress specifically votes to approve it, and number two, we have the new leadership at the Defense Department and the Joint Chiefs that we need. Getting into some big dispute with Russia over Ukraine would be incredibly moronic. Now, I'm sure the Pentagon, the intelligence community, and a lot of other so-called allies would love to see the U.S. tied down in Eastern Europe, because such an outcome would also be great for China and its supporters in the American media. But we have to resist any effort to stir up tensions between Russia and the United States now. Our military, our economic, and our national security focus has to be on the danger presented by the CCP. We just can't afford to waste time and resources in a hopeless controversy over Ukraine. If anything, we should be looking for ways to peel Russia away from the CCP. But instead, Russia and China seem to be getting closer under Biden. Well, he's bringing the world together, after all. It's a nightmare scenario for the U.S. In October, it was joint naval drills between our biggest adversaries. The Biden people are clueless, but the American people are not. That same survey I mentioned earlier noted that 52 percent of Americans see China as the top threat, up from just under 40 percent in February this year. Just 14 percent of respondents said Russia was our biggest threat. Now, finally, even if we did have good reasons for a conflict with Russia, which we do not, Biden and his team are totally in over their heads and would certainly fail in any military action, just as they failed in Afghanistan. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, General Milley, and General Austin should have all been booted the day after we lost 13 brave troops guarding the Kabul airport. Of course, no one was held accountable, and they seemed to have no regrets, except that, of course, lives were lost. That refusal to take responsibility for failed strategy alone is a disqualifier from future public service. Oh, and let's not forget, another terrifying prospect. America at war or on the brink of war, and then something happens to Biden, making Kamala Harris our commander in chief. Imagine that for a moment. The woman can't even keep staff, let alone keep track of military movements in Eastern Europe. Having someone as unqualified and untalented and apparently as unliked as this vice president is itself an ongoing national security threat to America. The Biden people didn't take any of these jobs seriously. It was one big exercise in diversity, equity, and inclusion, not merit. And now America is paying the price. So the bottom line is, Biden's gang who cannot shoot straight must not be allowed to squander any American lives or resources on a desperate and unnecessary conflict with Russia. And any Republican that's stupid enough to support such an imprudent effort will end up exiled from the party. And just ask Liz Cheney how it feels. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.